Hello there, my name is Ned, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add audio to a WebM Stinger transition that you can get into DaVinci Resolve or some type of other video editor, and then add your audio, export it out, convert it back to a WebM file, and then use it in your OBS as you need to. So, let's get started. Alright, so one of the things you'll need in order to do this is a WebM file that has a transition. If you're looking for a free option, there is the Visual by Impulse, which if you go out to their tools transition maker, you can see they have a couple of paid options that require credits, but they also have two free ones. For this purpose, I ended up just going with the one and added my logo to it that I use for a dangerous mix. So this is what we'll work with to kind of add audio to it because right now it is just silent which a silent transition can work in a lot of cases, but who knows, you might want some type of audio cue in there as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm not gonna get into how to install FFmpeg in this video, but I will link to a YouTube video from Troubleshoot who goes through showing you how to download that, work with 7-Zip to install that, to extract it, um, and then kind of get everything set up and installed so Windows recognizes it. That link will be in the description. Uh, be sure to kind of follow that. And there is one part where he gets into kind of the BTBN FFmpeg download. You can just ignore that aspect of it and just install a straight up full version of FFmpeg and you should be good to go. Okay, so after you have FFmpeg installed, uh, you're going to want to just double check that it's installed by typing in that. You'll see this type of result. That way you'll know it's installed. And you want to be in the folder that you are going to be working with the WebM file. So in this case, I have the WebM file sitting in my downloads folder. So I'm going to be working on my downloads folder. There is a command that you'll need to enter. I'll have that down in the description, but it is ffmpeg and then v codec. And it's using the lib vpx vp9, which allows you to keep the alpha channel. And for the input, we are going to use my ADM stinger that I got from Visual by Impulse. And we are using the pix underscore format. And we're using RGBA. And then I'm going to dump pretty much all these images into a frames folder. And it is going to use the percent zero four. D PNG. So this will pretty much give you a series of files that have that name. So I'm going to go ahead and execute. And you can see it has done everything that I expected to. And if I pull up that frames folder, what you'll see is a series of images that show exactly what the transition is doing. And this is what we'll ultimately import into DaVinci Resolve. All right, the scary command prompt part is done, and we're going to hop over into DaVinci Resolve. Here in DaVinci Resolve, you're going to want to be over on the Media tab first. Um, so you can see right now that it has kind of my thing set up. By default, DaVinci Resolve ends up kind of treating this as auto, which is pretty much pulling them in as their own individual images, which in some cases you may need. But in order for us to work with these things in particular, we're going to need to convert that to sequence and then it kind of treats it as a video that you can then add to your media pool. So once you've got that, you can pull that over into the edit page. And I'm also going to add a couple of audio things here that we can use to kind of give it an effect. So I'm going to pull in that and pull that out there. So when I play this, you're going to see something like that. And you can see I don't like how that was at the end there. So maybe I'll play that a little bit earlier. Yeah, so that kind of works. So one of the reasons why we use the FFmpeg um, was to keep the alpha channel as we exported the video files and brought it back together. So. Just to kind of show you that that is still in place, I'm going to bring in an image and we're going to drop that down on the timeline, move that up, put that below, 
And when I hit play from the beginning, you can see it had transparency still. So once you have all this set up the way you like it, you can kind of run through, test it, make sure it's doing everything you want. You're going to want to go and export. And what we're going to do is go to the delivery page where we're going to export it in a format where it keeps the alpha channel. And then from there, we'll use a tool to convert it over to a WebM file. So when you're over here, what you're going to want to do is give it a name, have a location where you're going to store it. Now, there are some cases where once you have this set up, um, you'll need to tie and kind of maybe toggle between individual clips and single clips. You're ultimately going to want it on single clips to keep the audio. Um, so one of the things you're going to want to do is set the format to QuickTime. The codec is going to be GoPro Cinema Form. And then you're going to want the type of RGB 16 bit. You're going to want to also make sure the resolution matches your video output in this case. HD 1920 by 1080 is what I have. Uh, frame rate, that should be fine. And then what you're going to make sure is this export alpha is checked. After you have all these settings, make sure export audio is working as well. And then you're going to add to render queue and then go ahead and render it out. All right. So once we have that exported, you'll want to kind of pull it into OBS. So we will look to add a stinger transition. Um, and then we will select that file that you've exported, which is currently a move. Um, in this case, I know mine is about two seconds and I want to put a about a second delay between, and I do want to make sure that my audio. So as I transition between scene one here and go to scene two, you should see it. And you can see that it has the audio to it. It has the alpha channel and is ultimately exactly what we're looking for. All right. So now that we have the dot move file and we know that that works, what we're going to need to do is convert it to WebM. And what I use to do that is this tool called Shutter Encoder, which is a free tool. And I definitely recommend it. I've used it for converting other files before, but it's definitely good for this purpose. So we're going to go ahead and look for the move file. Open that up. What you're going to want to choose for the function and this is where it could get a little confusing, but we are staying with the VP9. So once you select that, you're pretty much going to leave everything default here. Make sure this is saying WebM. And then you're going to come down to the advanced features and you're going to want to have the enable alpha channel checked. So once you have all this set up and configured, all you got to do is hit start function. And what it will do is put a file out in that folder that the .move file is in. And we can go ahead and close this. So now that we have that file, it creates a VP9 version. We are going to update OBS to use that. So we will find it here. You'll see that it added a VP9 part of the name. You can edit that if you need to, but it ultimately it is a WebM file. So we are going to use that and test it. And it seems to work. This is how I was able to edit a WebM file and add audio and keep the alpha channel as well. Do you have a better way? If so, leave a comment below. Otherwise, stop on my Twitch and we can discuss. Also, if you're a fan of movies and entertainment, you should check out my other YouTube channel, A Dangerous Mix, where I'll be posting reviews and other things that might entertain you. Or you can check out my podcast, Drag Me to the Movies, at dragmetothemovies.com. Links are in the description below. Thanks and have a good one. Bye.